Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 18th. I'm on the road right now, so no fancy editing, no fancy pictures, sorry about that, but I do have three interesting stories, and two of them are updates on previous stories on the TDD Report. The SMS Google search, I don't know if you remembered, but I think more than a year ago on a TDD Report, I talked about the fact that even if you didn't have a smartphone, you could still use some of the features of Google search just by dialing G-O-O-G-L-E. Well, as of May 9th, people were reporting on the forums that the SMS search was no longer working for them. And as of the 10th, an official from Google actually posted a message. Um, this is from a lady named Jess posting on the Google forums as a regular official of Google. Closing products always involves tough choices, but we do think it is very hard about each decision and its implications for our users. Streamlining our services enables us to focus on creating beautiful technology that will improve everyone's lives. So um, a really nice way of saying, sorry all you people that don't have smartphones, but uh, you're being able to use Google search for directions or information is uh, pretty much over now. Kind of sad, but I, I can't say I didn't see it coming because eventually it, it seems like the market's going to be so saturated with people having smartphones that I could kind of see it coming and it was nice while it lasted. But yeah, no more SMS use from your uh, dumb phone, as I call them. That's what I still have because cheapest and easiest to use and I like affordability. Next up, this is from 1954 Shadow. There's a product called Volo Lights. I don't know. Uh, this is for motorcycles. Uh, if you're a motorcycle rider, the worst sound you ever want to hear is screeching brakes behind your motorcycle. Even if it's on the opposite lane and not affecting you, it still it freaks me out to no end to hear screeching brakes because you never know if they're coming at you or not. Well, this Volo light system is able to detect when you're slowing down, even when you don't apply the brakes, as, as far as if you're gearing down or something like that. These can actually detect that and start a uh, progression of flashing lights to be able to alert people. This uh, supposedly is going to and I think it's going to actually, not just supposedly, but I think in my mind, it's going to really help our safety a lot. How many times have you guys done like I did? And if you think somebody's behind you that's not paying attention, even if I'm not using my brakes, I tap on the foot brakes at least just to kind of flash them and get the people's attention. Uh, supposedly also this has an algorithm to where um, besides the sensors, if you're going downhill and you're coasting downhill but you're not decreasing your speed, it can detect that and not do the flashing lights for going downhill. And... Uh, uh, I don't know right now if uh, I don't have the price available. I don't know if I forgot to put it down, but the links to everything as usual. All the links will be down below so you can read a lot more about it than what I've just got here. And third up, this is from, uh, that was from 54 Shadow. I don't know if I, I mentioned that. This next one is from Gamer Glow. This is an update on the Kepler satellite. I talked about this, I think, less than a year ago that one of the reaction motors one of the reaction wheels had actually gone down, but they still have this thing called a skew wheel that's off at an angle that can compensate for it. So even if you have uh, one of three main wheels not functioning, if you incorporate that, that um, third wheel, that extra, the fourth wheel in there, you can still keep the satellite running pretty much normal. Well, unfortunately now they lost another wheel and it can't really compensate that much for it. They say as of now what they may try to do is resurrect one of the older wheels that did shut down or the wheel that is giving a problem right now, they may try rocking it back and forth, trying various things. If you're not aware, the Kepler satellite is the Planet Hunter. Now, it's not like we didn't get our money's worth because it's actually um, completed its entire mission that it was scheduled to complete, and they were going to actually let it keep running for several more years. And they're saying right now, the national, NASA officials are saying it's about a 50-50 shot. They may be able to still keep it going. So... Let's hope for the best in that because it's accomplished a lot already. What they would like is a few more years of information because if they have planet crossings such as, um, let's say for example, let me give you this example, say it was another star system that was uh, just a little ways away from us and watching the Earth and Mars transit. Well, the Earth takes once a year to transit, Mars takes every two years to transit. You need a lot of information. You want to get a lot of data points to be able to really decide that there are how many planets there are and how they do transit. You need a lot of data points. And like they said, the, the more years we get, the less noisy the data is. So hopefully they'll keep the satellite, the Kepler satellite going for a little while longer. Uh, if not, they do have a mission in the future scheduled in a few years to take over from where Kepler left off. But let's just give a, let's hope that NASA can get it uh, worked out and solved. So anyway, I'm on the road. I'm in Mount Vernon right now, headed for Kansas City. Wanted to put the TDD report up. You guys take care. I will catch you next week.